Okay, we're going to look at trying to find the angle between two curves using derivatives. Okay, so here's my two curves. This is the formula we're going to use. Okay, remember, m1 and m2 are going to be the slope of the tangent line at the intersection point of these two curves. So the first thing I have to do is find the intersection point. Okay, so first I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to my y equals. Okay, and I need to type in the two equations that I have. So I have x squared minus 1, and then the square root oops, of x plus 0 0.5. Okay. If you have a TI-83, it's going to put parentheses. You have a square root parentheses, then you should put an end parentheses on at the end. Okay, so let's just start out with zoom standard. Okay. And we'll draw our graph. Okay, so that's what my graph looks like. Okay, so the first step I need to do is find that intersection point. So I'm going to press second calc. Okay, and the calc button is actually on the trace button that's on the buttons underneath your screen. Okay, and we want to choose number five, which is intersect. So I'm going to press intersect. Okay, now it's asking me my first curve, and you notice if you look up here, it shows you that you're sitting on Y1, right? and you can tell that by this cursor here, yours would be actually be flashing. And so I'm going to press Enter, Okay, and then it'll switch up here, Y2, it's asking me for my second curve, so I'm on Y2, so I'm going to press Enter again, and the next thing it asks me for is the guess. Okay, so all I'm going to do is move my cursor over so it's sitting on top of where the intersection point is. For my guess, make sure you press enter. When you get done here, it should say intersection and it gives you your x and your y coordinate. In this particular case, I don't care anything about the y coordinate, I only care about the x because I'm trying to find the intersection point of, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the tangent line or the slope of the tangent line at that intersection point. Okay, so now that I have the intersection point, okay, most of this I'm just going to do my calculator. I'm going to go back to my home screen. Okay, remember it's in X, so I didn't even have to write it down. I mean, actually, if I do X, okay, and hit enter, it shows it to me. If you're afraid of losing it, like if you actually go back to your graph, it's going to change the X. You actually could store it in a different variable. So I just press X again, and then there's an STO button. Okay. And that tells me I want to store it, and you have 26 different alphabet letters, so I'm just going to put it in A. Okay, so then I just pressed alpha A, and all I did is stick it in A. Okay, so it's actually right now both in X and A. Okay, so now we're going to go into the math menu. Okay, and we want to take a derivative, which is num number 8. So in number 8, the 84 screens, once I press this, are actually, I'm sorry, the 83 screens are going to look different than my 84 screen. Okay, so in the 83, it's the, where it's first sitting right here, saying which variable in your function you're going to use, and I want to use x. Okay, what is your function? Remember, have the, have this typed in y1, and we have that one typed in y2. So I'm going to press alpha f4. Okay, and I want to tell it that I want, I want to take the derivative of y1. So I just press enter. Okay, and where do I want to take the derivative? Okay, that's what this last box is going to be. Okay, so I want to take the derivative at, remember I stored that in a, so I'm going to say at alpha a. Okay, so that gives me that my slope of, for the first curve here, Okay, is going to be, I'm going to lose my screen for a second, so my slope, which I'm going to call m1, is equal to 3.12, okay, 1, 2. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for y2. So the easiest way to do that is just press second enter, okay, scoot over where you have y1, and we want to change that to y2, so I'm going to press alpha, and then the F4 button again, except this time I want to go down to where it says Y2. Okay, just press the down button. Press Enter to replace the Y1 with a Y2. I can press Enter again, and that tells me what M2 is. Okay, so I get M2, M2 is equal to 0.3483.
Okay, now I'm ready to plug all those numbers into here, but again, I want to do this on my calculator. Okay, so remember on the 84 is we can go up and grab numbers as we need them. So on the 84, I'm going to do alpha F1, right, to build my fraction. Okay, the first number I need is M2, and it actually does not matter which one you call M1 and M2. So I'm going to press the up arrow button, so it's sitting on the point 3483. Press enter, and it will type that in there for me. This way it saves me from typing numbers in wrong. Minus, and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to grab the 3.12 for, M, for um, M, M1. Okay, so when it's, it'll turn black, press enter and it'll type it in there for you there. Okay, press the down arrow button to get in the denominator. Okay, now that works kind of funny with the denominator. I can't just go grab numbers in the denominator. So I'm actually going to hand type something in. So I'm going to do 1 plus... Okay, um, my M1 is actually the last answer I did, so I can just do second answer, okay, times, but I'm going to have to hand type the point 3, 3.1212, and that's actually good enough, right? And the reason is, is because if I try to put it there, it's actually going to put, would put it out here on the end and try to multiply it flat by it. You can't grab numbers and stick them in the denominator when you're using this command, okay? Now when I press enter, Okay, it's going to tell me this just this piece in here. Okay, and you notice it gives me a negative value, but I want to take the absolute value of that. Okay, but remember, absolute value just changes it to positive. So I'm going to press because I want I want the angle. I have what the tangent of that angle equals to. So I'm going to have to press second tangent. Okay, I want the positive of that negative 1.321. So I'm going to press a negative here. Okay, and then. When I go, when I do second answer, that's actually going to make it positive, right? There's actually an absolute value command. You could have used it also. So here's negative of the answer. So it's going to be negative of negative 1.32, which gives you a positive value. Okay. So then that'll tell me that my angle is 53 degrees. Okay. So it's actually the, the Greek letter phi. So phi is 53 degrees. Okay, now what did we actually just find? Now let's look here. Oops, let me grab my. Okay, um, I actually changed the function when I did the picture. Then it doesn't agree with what I have here. Your function actually is over here, but the idea still works. Okay, so here's the tangent line. That red line is the tangent line at the intersection point of the square root graph. Okay, again, in my picture, it's actually x minus 0.5. It's the same idea, okay? Here's the tangent line of your x squared minus 1 graph, okay? The angle that you actually found was the angle in between the two curves, and it's actually always going to be an acute angle because we're always doing the, finding the angle uh, where its tangent is positive. And remember, that's in the first or the fourth, third quadrant, so we only really care about the one in the first because that's what the quad angle gets back. So you actually found this angle right here between them. Okay, or it should be the same as that angle in there. Okay.